Amazon started as a small online bookstore based in a garage. Since then, it has grown to be an intercontinental titan of e-commerce. In fact, recently, Amazon's creator Jeff Bezos became the richest man on earth, with over $100 billion in net worth. That surpasses the previous record holder, Bill Gates of Microsoft. The key to success is partly talent, but even more so it's the result of the company's approach to the data it gets from its more than 300 million customers. The sheer size and scope is incredible, and Amazon collects it all, analyzes it, and uses it in its business. The company has also developed a number of data analysis tools for the rest of us. We wanted to learn more about that, so we headed over to the Galvanize building in San Francisco and attended the Data Science Environment event. This is first meetup we are doing accelerative in, uh, in San Francisco. We are opening our subsidiary here uh, at the moment, so we used to do a lot of events back in Argentina where headquarters currently are. But this, hope this is the first of many, and uh, we have a great partnership with Galvanize. We asked Julian Pirelli and Juan Salas, the speakers of the event, to give some hints on how to work most effectively with AWS, Docker, Lambda, and Chalice. For example, what Amazon tools are the most useful to data scientists? There are a lot of services on AWS, Amazon Web Services, uh, that are really powerful, very useful for data scientists. Some are pretty much standard right now. There's uh, Elastic Map Reduce, uh, there's uh, Kinesis, there's uh, DynamoDB from NoSQL. There's, uh, you have uh, Amazon Machine Learning, it's pretty cool too. So there's a whole range of services uh, from Amazon that, that you can leverage. There are also, there are also other providers uh, like Google or Microsoft. But yeah, there's now this ecosystem that uh, really makes your job much easier as a data scientist. We also wanted to figure out exactly what Amazon Lambda is and what it does. Amazon Lambda is a compute service for microservices. It's very useful because it's a simple way to run pieces of code. It's very easy to deploy code there. Uh, and it has its, uh, its application. If we, if we want to orchestrate multiple services or multiple data sources, uh, if we want to uh, schedule uh, jobs easily without well, having to uh, handle all the infrastructure that it requires, uh, Amazon Lambda is a great tool for the job. It's very easy. And I think personally that's very useful for data scientists uh, so we, that sometimes don't have a software engineering background and still want to run. Uh, tasks uh, easy, easily and quickly. But how exactly does Lambda make your work easier? For example, in AWS, uh, in Shalys, uh, will give us a convenient way to run our Lambda functions. Lambda functions can be run from a uh, API gateway, uh, from uh, custom events, from uh, events from uh, DynamoDB. Uh, in Shalys, we can uh, set annotations for those kinds of events. For example, if we want to have a routing that will fire a single function, or we can schedule tasks by setting their frequency as we would do on a cron tab. Um, and it's, that's pretty, uh, pretty neat because we don't have to handle multiple files, we can just do that from the source code. So from what we gather, Lambda runs code on high availability computing infrastructure and administers computing resources. The user simply supplies the code, the program does the rest. There's also an Amazon data tool called Docker. We also wanted to know what it is and what it can do. Docker is a technology to containerize applications. Uh, so you can install libraries and, and the dependencies for an application uh, without um, messing up all your system with uh, lots of dependencies. So you can run things separately from each other. But how do you run Docker and why should data scientists bother using it? You'll need to uh, install Docker. This is uh, the, the main application. Um, and then uh, you will write a Docker file. With uh, with this Docker file, you will set up the dependencies needed uh, for Docker, and then you will just uh, run one command that is uh, Docker app, um, Docker compose app, or Docker run, one of those, and then you are running Docker. 
Apparently, it's so simple, you can deploy code using a single command line. In general, what you need to do is connect uh, through SSH to a secure protocol using the console, copy your uh, Docker configuration files to an Amazon instance in EC2, just run Docker Compose app, and that should be all that you need to do. Last but not least, there's an Amazon tool called Shelly's Framework, and we wanted to know what it does. Shellys is a framework that's uh, man maintained uh, by Amazon. Uh, it's a very convenient way to deploy code because it will abstract some of the uh, tasks that we need to do to generate a deployment. So, for example, we don't have to uh, handle uh, routing, we don't have to handle the logging and monitoring, we don't have to configure uh, pretty much anything. We just put our code in a simple in a single file uh, and that will spawn all the Lambda functions that we need to create. We also have tools to test locally, we don't have to deploy to Lambda, so it's basically a tool to make your life easier. But why bother to use Shalice? Once we have the, our code ready, uh, we have a, a very simple piece of code that we know we want to send to Amazon. Uh, Shalice has a, has a command line interface that will allow us to deploy with, by just running Shalice deploy. That will load the configuration file that contains the environment information or source code and some uh, other uh, dependencies that we might uh, require for, for our deployment and we'll send them, package them and send them all to Lambda and create a working environment. In other words, Shalice is something a data scientist might want to use on a less complex task. The reason? It takes less time and it's easier to work with than other options that produce similar results. I actually use it quite, quite a lot. Uh, I think it's uh, very convenient. Uh, and if I do have some other more complex tasks to, to handle, I, I will use Docker, which is the other technology that we presented here today. Because it simplifies the way to install applications, and you can run your applications without having to install too many things. Can you share some personal experience from using AWS? We built an application for different services. It was using a MongoDB database, then a MySQL database, and a Postgres database. These were requirements. And it was uh, really difficult to start working on, on this application. One new developer came uh, to help uh, developing the application, so it was easier for us to uh, add more developers to the project. It was a, a scraper and then it was exposing information to a public audience in the web, things of data science and machine learning uh, in the process in between. For example, uh, I work on a, on a project right now to do customer segmentation. Uh, for that, I uh, scrape data from uh, multiple data sources, um, one of them being uh, dating apps and Spotify. So with that I get demographics uh, by using bots from uh, multiple uh, cities. Uh, we're currently we're scraping 10 cities at the moment. Uh, we have data for uh, roughly 600,000 uh, people and uh, based on that data we can match them with their music preferences and with their uh, metadata about their job description, about their uh, education and uh, calculate the Myers-Briggs profile for, for them and extract some features from the image, for profile image. Say people are outdoorsy, people are uh, generally surrounded by others, are they extroverts? Uh, and uh, with that information we can create a, a marketing segmentation uh, that we use for, uh, to, to match it with our music preference, what songs they, they, they like. So I think that's a very uh, interesting application because it's not intuitive and uh, but also poses some questions about data privacy about all the data that's out there uh, can be reused for a purpose that you didn't intend it for. We finished the intended interviews and we were almost out the door when we met Rhiannon Shearer. She was just a guest at the data science environment event 
but her thoughts are worth sharing. I think it already does. I mean, we use it every day, even when we don't know that we're using it in technology. So whether I'm talking to my Amazon Echo or I'm using a mobile app, um, I'm, I'm using AWS, I'm using Lambda, and that just is going to continue to propagate as people realize how easy it is to spin up something like that. Security is the number one issue that we have in data science right now. And I think that stuff where we can test it easily to see what the behavior would be from a client is going to be hugely successful, whether you're a data scientist or you're a programmer, developer, whether you're using uh, AWS or not, the ability to quickly be able to test different theories is of utmost importance. As I love Elon Musk, so, <laughs> and he's on the consortium saying that it could be dangerous. But no, I mean, I think that as we watch things like, um, Isaac Asimov, I don't know if it's because they predicted it that now people want to make it happen or if it would have been the natural progression even if science fiction, science fantasy hadn't predicted it and we know that things like Terminator, Skynet, Whopper, um, from War Games, I mean all of those things may come true if we don't ensure that there's a lot of visibility into how people use technology and the information that they're giving to, um, to machines. Seems like data scientists can use these Amazon tools to make a lot of improvements in the way they handle data. Thanks to the availability of these applications, it's more convenient now to analyze data, and frankly, with all the neat tools that are now available, the field of data analysis is getting downright sexy these days. Amazon's data tools make collecting customer data easier and more efficient for the rest of us. Hi, I'm Juan Salas. Rian and Shear. I'm Julian Pirelli. For a world tech now. That's it for now. But don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. There are more exciting videos about IT and technology that are on the way. So please consider subscribing. That way, you won't miss any of them. See you soon.